What is happening you all? Jay here and welcome back for another Elden Ring DLC guide. And in this one, we're going to complete the Vymir and Johan's quest line from start to finish, which gives you an armor, a weapon, a magical staff, a really cool talisman, couple of talisman actually, an incantation, a crazy defensive talisman a rabbit cannon and an option, an option to either choose a really, really cool weapon called the Sword of Night or Joland's Sword Hand of Night, Joland's Spirit Summon, which can be then further upgraded to Joanne and Anna Spirit Summon. And which one is a better choice? Well, after playing with both of them, I think there's a clear winner, but more on that later. So. We start our journey at the fort of Reprimand and to access this fort, we need to head south from High Road Cross to Morth Highway South Grace site. Enter the fort and towards the west end, you will see a hole in the ground. Go through it and here you're gonna find some nice items along with an omen killer. Kill him and he's gonna drop the iris of oculation. You need this item for right at the end when you have to make that all important choice. Now, before we leave the fort, I wanna show you a couple more treasures and a boss that drops an extraordinary item. So, after defeating the Omen Killer, head straight where you're gonna find the Mesmer Soldier Ashes. And after this, climb the nearby stairs and you'll find a boss waiting for you. But before you fight him, make sure you activate the nearby Sight of Grace. And upon defeating him, you will find one item that was most talked about after the trailer, the aspect of the Crucible Wings Ash of War. From here, we need to head back to Morth Highway South Grace side from where we started. And from this location, we need to head north to the Morth Ruins. Feel free to activate the grey site here and then make your way across the archway where you're gonna find a broken sunken house. Behind it is a hole and that's where you need to go. Collect the talisman and then drop down further where you're gonna find a chest with some more treasure. Do a 180 from there and then drop down again to find a tunnel and that tunnel will lead you to stairs. Stairs that will take you to the Boney village. From this location, we need to head north here, where you're gonna find a tree, and below which is the O Mother Emote, which incidentally I had already taken in one of my runs. So the idea here is to collect all the necessary items that you need for the quest before we actually meet our main characters which will make this quest so much easier in the later part of the walkthrough. So go ahead and equip the emote and now it's time. Time to meet our two main characters, Vymir and Johan at the Cathedral of Manus Meter. And for that, we need to take this path. Feel free to pause and take a screenshot.
Once you reach the cathedral, activate the Sight of Grace and enter the main hall where you're gonna first come across Vaimir and after exhausting his dialogue, he's gonna offer you a necklace and a ruins map. Also, Vaimir here sells a lot of spells and it even gets updated as you move along in this quest. Inside the cathedral, you're also gonna come across Johan. So exhaust the dialogue and from here, we need to move to the Cerulean Coast. You start at the castle front site of Grace and from here you head in this direction until you reach this valley area. Go under this and reach the swamp area and finally through this and reach the Elak river cave. And if you're wondering how to get this colossal greatsword, which I believe is the best strength weapon in the game, I will link that guide in the description below. From this location, you need to go downstream and then underneath this whole area. And when you come out on the other side, you go further south until you reach the Cerulean coast. And from this very same location, not too far, you also get the best weapon in the game, the Star Line Sword. And I made a separate video on that, so do check that out, I'll link that in the description below. Anyway, from here, we need to hug the left side and keep going straight until you come across a wall. And if you're new here, you can also unlock the map of this area. 
from this wall which looks like the Great Wall of China, turn left. But before going ahead, you might want to take a detour left and collect a rare item. Keep going along the beach until you come across these rock-like structures. You want to take a left from here. And feel free to activate the next site of grace. In this location, we need to find a stone hedge-like structure which is basically like a lot of fingers pointing towards the center. So keep going straight and not before long, on the left side you can see that structure. Also, one small tip, if you hug the left side and move forward, you can avoid a lot of enemies. And while Elden Ring's most irritating enemies were the hands, in this DLC is this face sucking guys. I don't know what they are called, but they have this ranged attack which is nothing short of an aimbot. There you go, I, I so hate these guys. Once you reach the center, interact with the finger and that'll give you a Crimson Sea Talisman. Now, you need to head back to the Cathedral of the Manus Meter and talk to Vymir again, where he's gonna reward us with a second ruins map along with the very popular Stardust Talisman. Next up, we need to make our way to the Shadow Keep Church District, which is right next to the cathedral. So start at the Church District High Road and move in the northwest direction to finally reach your destination. From here, jump down and take a right, and not before long, take a left to then jump onto the ledge in front. Turn right and walk along the ledge before jumping right and then jumping again onto the next roof. Jump onto the next roof and then jump left before jumping down from a broken roof. Continue straight and you're gonna come across two mesmer guards. Dodge roll both of them and we are looking for the second exit. Pass one, take the second one. Take this elevator and that'll take us to the specimen storehouse. We need to climb this ladder and while you are doing that, just appreciate the scale of this game. This place also has a Freya quest line, and that video will be up in the next 48 hours. So I really appreciate your support with a sub and a like. Okay, so right here, you actually don't need to kill anyone. Just sneak around the corner and take the stairs up. Take right, then left. And right ahead, you're gonna find an opening. Collect a couple of treasures here, and on the other side, you're gonna find a site of grace. From where, we need to take the next elevator up. Just follow my path until you reach the next set of stairs. Jump onto the platform you see in front and then go forward and jump down again. From here, you just need to take a couple of elevators down and that'll take you to the next side of grace. And on a side note, if you go straight from here, you're gonna find one of the hardest bosses in the game. Anyways, turn right from here and it's finally time to use the Oh Mother emote.
and this will take us to the most amazing garden that you have ever seen in a game and activate this side of grace called Skadu. <laughs> I will never get tired of these names. Skadu tree, Skadu. Skadoosh. From here, I'll just show you on the map where to go. So, cross the bridge, head right and finally reach here. Okay, so from here, we need to collect the final item and for that, we need to head back to the storehouse back section and drop down here, activate the grey site, move forward, turn left and then take the elevator. And from here, take the first archway right and then take the first left, jump down, turn around and find the iris of grace. And now, it's time for the final two acts and for that, we need to go back to the Cathedral of the Manus Meter and meet Vaimir one final time. So this is a good time to collect any spells you want from him. Now, you wanna go back to the grey site to come back and find him missing. Interact with the chair and go down from here where we're gonna encounter first sword hand Anna and then a boss. After defeating the boss, head back to the cathedral for the final time where Sword Hand of Night Joanne is gonna be waiting for you. Kill Joanne and that's gonna make Vymir really mad. And that's your next boss. Defeat Vymir and rest at the site of grace to then come back again to meet Joanne. And it's now where you have to make the choice. Joanne and Anna's spirit summon or the Sword of Night. Now, for me, the Sword of Night is a clear winner. On the face of it, it looks like a normal katana with some magic built in. But this katana is unblockable. It's a weapon that can cut through guard and it has bleed on it. It's gonna be such an S tier weapon in PvP. So for me, is this over the summon. Now, mind you, the summons are quite OP as well. And if you do choose to go for the summon to get both, that's Joanne and Anna, make your way back to the garden and now we need to reach here, which will lead us to the Rabbath Rise. And on the way, we'll be picking up two final treasures, the Minor Artery and the Golden Bread. And while the former is an amazing feat incantation, the other one is excellent to negate holy damage. Drop down from these rocks and you're gonna find the rabbit rise. Where you're gonna find the corpse of Anna, interact with it and you'll find the Joanne and Anna spirit summon. And finally, drop down to collect the rabbit cannon. So that's it. That completes the Weimir and Johan quest line. And for more quests, boss guides, weapons, builds hey! and much more on the shadow of the earth tree, a like and a sub would be simply lovely.